What is going on, everyone? It's your boy Phil Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog here, and we are here for our JGA semifinals watch through, ladies and gentlemen. Now, unfortunately, one game was not uploaded for the replay, and I don't know if it's the fault of both coaches or one of the coaches that decided not to upload it, which I don't understand why they wouldn't, as it's technically required to upload your games so we can watch it. But they decided not to upload it, so unfortunately, guys, you get seven and not eight. So there's that. But we're going to go ahead and make note of it. It's from the Thunderous Division. is Pika versus Lunar, and Pika wins with a 2-0 differential. Pika moves on to the finals of the JGL Thunderous Division. So I thought, you know what, in fairness to Kyles and SJ, who are the other Thunderous Division coaches, they are going to be game of the week for the playoffs just because of the fact it's only fair to them. So that way, everyone else that's playing there too gets their two, and then they get to be saved for last. Just out of fairness and out of respect for those two. But if you guys are excited for the JJDL semifinal games here, get some hype in the chat, get some hype in that comment section, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to be up to date for the JJDL. Next week, we will get the finals of the JJDL, and uh, we're going to see some pretty powerful matches. Now, I have not seen the results except for obviously Pika and one other one. And the reason why is because Cam spoiled it to the JJ General chat. He literally told me that he, and this is spoilers, but we're going to still watch it. He basically told me that he won with, I don't know if it, it was for this one, bro, but I felt like he told me that he won with having like an Ursarine on his team for another time. Cam, you, have, you literally saw me just talk about this, man. You're not supposed to spoil your game. But it's okay. It was unintentional, and it was just a you know just a mishap. But it's fine. We're still gonna watch Cam. That's why Cam's gonna be the first game we're gonna watch here, just because of that. Uh, but with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into this matchup here. We're gonna start off with Cam versus Ursuline. Uh, some very scary teams. We see an Urshifu, which I'm guessing is water. If I'm gonna correctly guess here, Weavile, Mew, Ogre Pond with the Teal Mask, uh, Don Don Fan, and Lord just in on Cam's side, he's got the Rillaboom, Vikavolt, Cinderace, Strongman himself, aka Landris, Lanad himself, and then we have Conkelda and the Galarian Slowking. So let's go ahead and get into this matchup here. As we see a very good lead here, we see a Bullet Seed loaded dice Rillaboom off lead for Cam, and that is such a phenomenal, phenomenal bring Cam there to get that in and just get the KO instantly. But now in comes this, and it's a, oh. So let's go over a little bit of turn of events of what we just saw there. First off, really great prep from Cam with the loaded dice, knowing that he was going to deal with a sturdy mod in this matchup in the um, Dawn fan. Very phenomenal prep on Cam's end right there. And also a very good double on the switch out there with uh, the Gunk Helder to be able to get that Guts boost immediately, which is really good. Very weird on the Baton Pass play. I feel like you should always pressure with a knockoff because I think it's always really good into anything you have. So I do think Ursuline definitely made a little bit of a misplay there. But now we get this Mew. It's Iron Defense and Earth Powers, which is not going to do anything to this Glow King. As there comes the Toxic. Sleeker Knights will not work. And now this Glow King kind of just sits in front of this Mew, uh, which definitely proves that it is not Store Power Mew. As the double into the Vikable comes out, that has got to be banded. As we're going to see a Volt Switch... And I uh, get the pivot out here. In comes to the Conkel there, which now gets a free facade here, which is really big damage. Now knowing Cam, he's going to probably make the double out here just to prevent the switch out. And he's got to actually sack the Weavile. Wow. That was big. Really big play by Cam right there. I'm guessing Cam kind of knew that this set probably did have a psychic move probably. Or if it had psychic move, it probably was going to be maybe psychic, which Cam probably was built to live one hit from. To get the hand with, or he was just gonna try to bait out the double that would have been probably either the uh glow king or the vikavolt on that turn so a very good prediction by cam there as now they get rid of the weavile which was a massive threat to the glow king and to the landers now landers kind of low-key is looking pretty good as long as urshifu is not scarfed it gets checked but if the lanad is scarfed then it's kind of just checked game point right there already but now this con kind of just sits to click a button against this team which is pretty free here. So they're going for the Surging Strikes here. This Con is going to eat this head up. And it's just another free Guts Boost episode. They're actually going to go for the Drain Punch here. Don't know if I agree with that play. Into the facade. Wow. And there goes the Mew again. The Con putting in work. I definitely think that 
looking at Ursuline here, I definitely think they mis they're misplaying really hard around this conk. Now, I can kind of understand maybe not taking the risk, going for the KO, and letting the conk get healthy. But in any ways, you're keeping this thing low, and you're keeping it in check to where it can't help revenge with a mock punch on either the pitcher, on the Ursuline at least, or getting chip damage off on the, not Ursuline, but the uh, Urshifu, and also getting chip damage with mock punch on the Ogre Pond. So generally speaking, I think you should have just stayed with the Mew and just gone for the Psychic. Even though like the Glowking comes in, Psychic is under switchable on this team. But this Con Calder is getting so much effort, which is really, really good. As now this is going to go for Calm Mind on the Facade again! I do not know what is going on here. But Cam got so much value with that Con Calder. In comes this thing. As we're going to see a double edge into that NC store power here. Which, I don't know if I really agree with that set, to be honest with you. I think if you're going to go store power, you need to make sure you are more of a reliable set. Or something with maybe Wish or Calm Mind or like sub, something like that. Really good prep there from uh, Cam, though, to go with the uh, double edge there. Knowing that it was one of the best counterplays to Floor Jess, And also just a really good offensive coverage move to Floor Jess as well. So, double edge, though. Really good prep by Cam, though. And I think Cam pretty much just has this game under wraps. I don't think there's anything Cam can really do. We're going to see the Aqua Jet here. As we're going to see another double edge, which I'm going to take a guess and say that that is potentially Bandit Cinderace there. And with that, the Rillaboom is going to come in here. It's going to get the U-turn here, and Glowking's just going to stay in here. And Glowking's just going to get it. Oh, going to stack the Vikavolt, which is a little interesting. I personally thought the Trailblaze would have made more sense there, but we're going to see a Glide. And with that... Uh, Cam pretty much pulls out a dominating 3-0 victory. Cam really, really played around Ursuline's team and definitely deserved his final spot. Just dominated this game. I definitely think Ursuline really just, I think after that Dawn fan going down and losing that Weavile, they just lost any kind of momentum of like offensive pressuring and just not finding themselves any good chances to just set up and do anything in this matchup. Uh, and you know what's gonna happen to everyone. You're not gonna you're gonna lose the opportunity to get any setup going, and also find yourself in a position to start winning. So it's a little unfortunate for Ursuline, but they had a phenomenal season, and they did really really great during their run. Congratulations for making the semifinals, but we gotta make a big congratulations to our first Lenard finalist in Cam. Shout out to my boy Cam. Up next we have the second final mat, the second semifinals matchup here. Being not Zodiac first is everyone's favorite underdog, Crab. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. As we see the Landris Therian, the Iron Jubilee, the Iron Valiant, Scizor, Tyranitar, and Sinisha, which is a weird paper mache 3D model. I don't know why. Versus Zodiac team, which is Sylveon, Rory Moon, Gastrodon, Annihilate, Regular Weezing, and the um, Paradox Sandy Shocks. I don't know where else I'm going with that. So this is going to be very interesting. I can see. This Iron Valiant winning. It just needs chip damage on the Weezing and having a coverage move, and it kind of just beats it. Scizor also looks very good in countering just stuff down. And also, if it gets a Trailblaze off, it could be able to beat the uh, Sandy Shocks and the Gastro. Jugulus looks also phenomenal in this matchup. Jugulus look, has like very little counterplay into this match. So uh, let's just see how this is going to go. So with that being said, let's get into this matchup. We're going to see the Gastro lead into the Jugas. We're going to see a Spirit Break here, and that looks like it is definitely going to be physically defensive wheezing here. As we see a Gunk, which is a very interesting play. I personally, looking back real quick, I don't know why you would Gunk in this matchup, seeing as there was a Scizor there. I feel like a Willow was always free because it punished, you know, a potential aggressive um, Landorus on a potential poison move there. Uh, also, the Tyranitar as well. I personally think will o -Wisp was a better play over Gunk Shot, in my opinion. Also, I don't know why you're physical on this Weezing. But that's going to be very interesting to see going on in this matchup. But we're going to see Turbo in here. So we're going to see an Earthquake here. And that is very strong. As now we're going to see a U-turn here. As we see an Ice Beam from the Gastrodon. In comes this. We're going to see a Knock Off. Unfortunately, into the Crit, which is very unfortunate. And we see a Sub. Sub through the taunt here, which now means the Drain Punch is going to go through here. Trying to keep this ape as healthy as possible. Air Slash is going to come through. And unfortunately, from what I've tested with my good friend Rose, if I have done the math correctly, Air Slash, if you break it, the sub, it will not boost Rage Fist. 
Which, personally, for me, it makes sense, but also doesn't at the same time. I feel like since you're attacking the Substitute, you're still attacking the Mon, so I feel like that should technically count as a, getting a Rage Boost, Rage Fist Boost. But at the same time, like I said, I kind of understand why, because then it would be so broken to have a Mon like Annihilate on your team, and it would probably almost be band-worthy because of having, if, if you can get Rage Fist Boost from Substitute. So, But we're going to see another Drain Punch here. And gets the crit, so crit for crit. The Ape is a little more healthy. Now, in comes the Sandy Shocks. We're going to see another Air Slash here. Looks looks like this thing is a Scarf for Specs. Now we're going to see the Sinister come back, and then we're going to see a Volt Switch out, which is very good damage here. Into the ceiling, we're going to see a Macha Gacha here. Another crit, which does absolutely nothing. So that is Spadef Sylveon. And we're going to see a Calm Mind. Very interesting that we see a Calm Mind here. So it's going to be interesting to see what we're here. We're going to see another Calm Mind. They are very much risking the roll here, and unfortunately do not get the roll, which is very good. They're going for a Macha Gacha here. Very interesting to see a Macha Gacha there. As it's kind of just put in checkmate position to where this thing can kind of just do some things. Um, but it looks like, I mean, it just, it, just, it just takes one crit to knock them out. And definitely they are whittling down this uh, Sylveon, which is going to be actually a problem to deal with for a Crab team. But Crab is pretty much handling it very well. Crab is kind of just keeping it in a position to where it's lowered down. And then Crab can just kind of get in a position where he can kind of just spam Calm Mind. Crab is playing with a crit, though, so Crab does have to be very careful of how he plays around this thing. But the way it's looking like, uh, Crab is kind of putting himself in a position. He's about plus four. He's going for the Macha Gacha here, which is not going to be enough to get the KO. It does guarantee a 2 KO here. Now, it's up to Crab if he wants to go for his 2 KO or if he wants to go for He's going to go for this 2 KO, get rid of the Sylveon, which was a massive threat to Crab's team. And now Crab is looking pretty good here. In comes the Roaring Moves. We're going to get knocked. And he's just going to sack off that thing, which is very unfortunate there. Um, it, Well, it looks like to him, it looks like that must have been a roll, potentially, with even having knock. I guess he was, like, super defensive to be able to take a knock, possibly. I, I don't know, but I definitely think he should have switched out there because it was a really good answer to things like... Um, if it could outspeed like a defensive annihilate, it also was really good to handle the Sandy Shocks and the Gastrodon. So I think I would have personally saved the Sinistra, but we'll see how this. So we're gonna see a U-turn here. As in comes the big Tyranitar, as we're gonna see a D-dance from T-Tar here. And we're gonna see what this thing's gonna do here. We're gonna see a knockoff and unfortunately not pick up the KO. And we're gonna see a dead Tyranitar. Once again, proving why Tyranitar is just a weird fit on so many teams here. We're gonna see another spirit break here. As uh, we're gonna see just a pretty much an easy swap in here. We're gonna see the scissor now pivot in here, which is really good here. Now the scissor could kind of just SD for free. We're gonna see a knockoff. Very interesting. We see a payapa berry, which is a very good break onto the wheezing. Now we see the bullet punch there, and now Iron Valley kind of just wins. We're gonna see another bullet punch, and unfortunately not get the knockoff. Rage Fist is gonna come out, and knock out that scissor, but now Landorus kind of comes in, and Landorus kind of just a click earthquake, and unfortunately kind of have to sack the annihilate here. In comes Turbo, as we can see another quick, and it gets a good roll to knock it out. In comes the Rory Moon. As we're going to get another Earthquake. And God, that is so much. That's got to be Adamant. That might be Bandit as well from the Dark Knight. And I think this is going to be a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. I think Crab has picked up the victory here. As it looks like Crab is either is probably Scarf on this thing. No, he is not. And oh, the crit! Oh, the crit! Oh, and we see a rest. Is it Resto Chesto? It is Resto Chesto. So Crab is going to actually be able to pull out the victory here. Oh, my God. Holy crud, what an ending to that game right there, man. Holy shalooty de doo de doo doo doo. Man, that scarf iron head. Holy crud. I would imagine it was probably a roll on the Iron Valiant, but the crit guaranteed it, basically. If that flinch on Jugas happened, I would have felt so bad for Crab. But Crab continues the underdog run. As he is the underdog in every season, Crab proving his dominance. I think Crab actually finishes the eighth seed, if I remember correctly. Crab is now on the verge of making the full underdog run from going from eighth seed to champion. And he's now going to move on to the finals, taking on Cam for the Lenada division. So your Lenada finals game will be Cam versus Crab. Very hyped matchup for this one. And I'm very looking forward to seeing two true heavyweights going at it right here. We got Cam who's making his debut versus the returning Crab. It's going to be a very hype matchup. I cannot wait to watch that game. Up next, we have got the Enamorous Division. I kind of went with a little bit of a random divisions this week, Ronald. 
we have the Fiendish Blish taking on Nice versus versus Nanny or Nami. I'm going to figure out one way to go with this name, I promise. But, as we can see with Nice's team, we got Garchomp, Braviary, Magnezone, Azul, Gliscor, and uh, Milotic versus Bliss's team, which they have the Jolteon, the Great Tusk, Uxie, Goldengo, Miascarata, and the Dudra. So let's go ahead and get into this matchup as we are going to see an Uxie Azul lead. Ooh, stop it, computer. And we're going to see a missed Fire Blast. It's a little bit unfortunate. And they're going to get free momentum here. Which is definitely funny. And we're going to see another U-turn here. And the Azov is going to go down. I don't know if I quite agree with that play. If I want to be honest. I don't think you sack Azov here. Unless it was Focus Sash lead and you just lost your Sash. And I guess you wanted to go with as much max value as you could. I definitely think you could have saved the Azov still. Because it could have still been a really good check to the Great Tusk. Even though, yes, you do have Bravier, but Bravier is your Terra Captain, which I don't even remember if it is or not. Uh, once I think Terra's, basically Great Tusk kind of just wins, because most likely it's going to have Ice Spinner to check Gliscor. So, uh, very interesting to see how that's going to go here. But now the Uxie is in on this momentum, which I think is a little bit of a scary bring here, because now the Gliscor gets to come in here. Gliscor always gets to get the free protect here. As it's going to be this. And this is one thing about the ice story that kind of sucks. You're kind of forced to protect. We see the imprison. And that is some hype right there. That is some hype right there. That is a fire. Fire set right there. That basically shuts down Gliscor from U-turning. And also for going for knock right there. Now it basically reveals that this Gliscor is either Earthquake or U-turn. Which is really, really good for Bliss now. Because they can kind of just see that this Gliscor gets hard walled by anything and everything on their team. Which is really, really good. So, and we are going to see no Earthquake. So, that must mean it's possibly no Earthquake onto that Gliscor. In comes the Gudra on the Skull. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be a burn. Yup, it is going to be a burn. I just knew it. But if it's special, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if it's special, it doesn't matter. We see a Thunderbolt. So, I'm going to go for the cover just to kind of see what this Gudra is going to do here. We're going to see an Ice Beam, a potential pivot. And we're going to see the Dragon Tail. Ooh, and the Gooey. Which activates the weakness policy. Oh, no. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. They were weakness policy and it procced because of Dragon Tail. Oh, no. That's so heartbreaking, dude. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. That's a fire Gujra set, though. I won't lie. That's a fire Gujra set. I wouldn't mind be shocked if I did something like that. Oh, that so hurts, man. That so hurts. As we're going to see another Skull, and of course, like I predicted, it was going to be another burn. This Milotic is just destructive. I actually got a little surprised it wasn't competitive based off of that. But we're going to see a knock here as the Gliscor is going to go ahead and get knocked off. <gasps> oh, it sucks. Or which is basically useless. And we're going to see the Imprison here. As we are going to see the Earthquake. So it does reveal to be Earthquake, which I'm very surprised it didn't show off Earthquake in that last move slot. And basically, at this point in time, uh, this Uxie just kind of loses to Gliscor 1v1. Until, like, they're going to go. So they can just click, Earth, like, like I said, they can just pretty much click Earthquake here as much as they want. Uh, any chip damage that they can get here is really good. As we're going to see the Ice Spinner, which I knew the Great Tusk was going to have. We see a Rapid Spin here, actually, as we see the Toxic on the Gliscor here, which is very good play by Nice. Able to make that aggressive pivot there. As we're going to see a knockoff here, we're going to see the Gooey come back here and make this fight spin pretty slow. As we're going to see another Protect to get more burn chip damage. And, you know, there's a lot of times that people say, like, oh, you click Protect with these chip damage just to stall the game. Now, in some ways, you could say this is stall, but in the same point, ain't, like, Nice has to play this game for them to win this game. And if it means getting, having to go for those Protects to get that extra chip damage of burn, for on the Gudra, or if, if it doesn't make sense for this, but to stall out turns with the Uxi, that's the way they gotta win. And sometimes, like, I think I've gotten used to it. I mean, if someone's gonna purposely stall, even though they already win the game, then it's one thing. They are having to play a little bit of a stall game because they are down one Mon, and they have to do what they can to be able to pull up the victory and get whatever KOs they can go for, even if it means passive damage kills. So as I'm looking at this right now, it is looking like a little bit stalled, but Nice is definitely playing this game very safe and is doing whatever they can to try to keep that team their team low and to try to get the KOs as much as they can going forward. So there, I think there's a definite difference between stall and then purpose stalling. Like purpose stalling is definitely why it's lame. 
but stall is just when you have to play a specific turn to make sure you're playing up to your own. Like, this Gujar's gonna die to burn because they knew they could put it in damage. In comes the Bravier, which is not Booch, surprisingly. As we're gonna see the Goldango, we're gonna see the Terra ground on this Braviary, and it's just gonna die to Goldango. And now this is very, very, very bad for, um, for, um, okay, I clicked pause. I know I did. With the, um, uh, nice now, because they have lost their Terra Captain, which is very unfortunate. But now they are very much down. And Garchomp's gonna come in, makes a really good scale shot play, which is really great there. They get the three hits off, and now it's gonna come down to whether this Garchomp lands another three to get the KO. Or if it goes for more higher. It's going to go for the SD on the U-turn. Very good prediction play there. As we're going to see the Meow Scarota. As it's going to be Scarf Meow. And that is going to be a dead Garchomp. And this is looking very rough for Nice now. I think this is looking pretty much just about GG's right here. But Nice is definitely not going to go down without a fight. They have to do whatever they can to try to get this game going into their favor. Which means if they got to go for any toxic damage that they can do. They got to do it there. So they're going to actually make a good prediction here. Go for an Earthquake. They actually go for a Toxic, which I'm a little surprised with. I think the Earthquake was a little bit more safer, but I can definitely see why they would make the play. They're going to go for the U-turn here again. Either a Toxic or an Earthquake is coming right here, as we're going to see the knockoff. Good prediction right there. They're going to get rid of the Uxie, which now means Earthquake is free in this matchup. So the Jolteon's going to come out. If I know any Jolteon set out there, it's going to be Terra Ice. And we're going to see the Calm Mine into the Volt Switch. And at this point in time, ooh, we see some screen action here. Are we looking at some potential back in the game here? Definitely not over yet. This Gliscor can single-handedly win this game. We're going to see the Flower Trick in the Crit, which we're going to see actually it's not doing much damage. As we actually see an Earthquake, a very interesting play on that one. As we're going to see the knockoff, a very fantastic play there. And a very good read. As we're going to see the Magnezone come in here. As we're going to see a Terra Blast, which actually looks like Ice Beam for some reason. But now we're going to see the Volt Switch here. This Magnezone plus Gliscor combination might save the day. We're going to see a Body Press prediction right there. And we're going to see, well, I guess not too much of a prediction. As we're going to see the Milotic come in now, we're going to see a Shadow Ball, which looks like probably Scarf damage. We're going to see a Recover off now. And Nice has actually brought themselves back into this game. As we're going to see a Flip Turn here into the Magnezone. And now Magnezone has got to make a prediction play here. I think they have to either make the... They do make the Volt Switch play, unfortunately, which is a little bit rough right there. But now this Great Test dies to Poison Damage on the following turn. They're actually going to sack off the Ma Milo, which I think in long game is actually the smarter play here. And now this is looking very grim here. As now the Gliscor comes in here. Gliscor is actually going to die to the Shadow Ball, and it looks like, unfortunately for Nice, no, they really were trying their best. They got to get a Para, and they don't have Discharge or Thunderbolt. It's going to be game. And Fiendish Blish is going to walk away with a very good game. They played that perfectly well. And we got to give a massive shout-out to Nice here. She really, really was almost going to come back in this matchup. She nearly did. So we got to give a round of applause. A round of applause to Nice. They did not go down without a fight. They came back strong and were doing the best they can. They nearly pulled off the victory. So a massive congratulations to Nice for making the semifinals, but congratulations to Fiendish Blish for making the playoffs in the Enamorous Division, or not the playoffs, very the playoffs, the finals of the Enamorous Division. Congratulations to them. Very well deserved. Very phenomenal game. Up next, we're going to see the second game being Flapple taking on Potatoes. It's looking like a very, very good game. We're actually we're waiting quite a while for this game, and this game was actually flowing pretty deep into it, so I can't wait to watch this one. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this matchup here. As we're going to see... Oh, we didn't talk about the teams. We didn't talk about the teams. From uh, Potatoes, they have Spectre, Enamorous, Jirachi, Chansey, Como, and Toxapex. Ew, 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 ew. Uh, <laughs> we see Flapple with the Blood Moon, Saluna, the Mimikyu, the Tinkaton, the Bisharp, the Kilobotchel, and the Rillaboom. So let's see what we're going to see about here now. I was going to see a trade of rocks, so that definitely gives them the benefit right there that Jirachi is not Scarf, which is really good. They're going for the knockoff there. Get rid of the leftovers is really good. They're going to see an Aura Spear here. This Tinkatung is fat. This Tinkatung does, does, does nothing. This takes everything in. So this has got to be massively special defensive. That has got to be no investment Jirachi. That has got to be fully defensive. And it looks like they're just going to sack off the Jirachi here. As this Jirachi is not doing anything in the Rillaboom. And we're going to see Kilowattro coming here as its boots. Encore is going to end here, and this is definitely looking like a bad position because it looks like a free Volt Switch here. As we're going to see a free Volt Switch, 
into the Tinkaton, which means another free knockoff here. They might trade be Thunder Wave here, but they get rid of the Violet on Chansey, which doesn't help too much, but it definitely opens up the door for a couple more mods on the team, which is really good here. As we're gonna see a double into the see a double out here with the Kingdom. We're gonna see Endeavor, which is a not the Endeavor Kilowatchel strikes again, ladies and gentlemen. The Endeavor Kilowatchel strikes again, but it did allow the Chansey to soft well. The Chansey is gonna go back down to 38%. And it looks like we're gonna see a volt switch here. Into the Tingatung tongue here, which I think the Tingatung tongue is going to be able to kind of help check this chancy here. As then it comes to Tox effects here, so we're going to see a potentially another. Okay, we're going to see another Encore here. We might see a knock. We're not going to see a knock here. So we're going to see the Jirachi comes in. This is a free Volt Switch and should pick up the Jirachi. It is going to pick up the Jirachi as Rillaboom comes in now, which is going to invite probably in that Kamoro. No, the Enamorous, which is very interesting. Now we're going to see a Moonblast here, and that is going to drop Rillaboom. Here comes the Kilowatch up, but again, a free Volt Switch here. Just allowing everything. We're going to see the Bisharp come in, and this is really bad. This is where Bisharp's going to be deadly here. Do we see the SD? We're going to see an SD right off rip here. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a knockoff here now. As we're going to see a Night Slash get the crit. Are they focus? Are they scope lens? That is the question. If not, they got a lucky crit there. As we're going to see a swap out here. Very interesting here. As we're going to see a Volt Switch here, which again, they're going to just probably click Recover here. No drawback and click Recover. They also click, click Recover. They actually click Gunk Shot here. Now, I won't gonna lie, I think Gunk right there was a little bit of a misplay. I think you always, with having Tinkaton in the back, you either go for the water type move or you go for recover, knowing that this thing can always bolt switch on you. So to keep the Toxic Specs much healthy, yeah, you got Regenerator, but again, think going for the recover is just safe. Yes, it's wasting one, but it keeps you back at full guarantee. As we're gonna see a play rough miss, as they went for the prediction right here, as we're gonna see a Surf here, which is not even gonna 2 AKO. As we're actually gonna see the double out into a knock here. The Chansey, and now we're going to see a player off. It's not going to be enough to kill the Chansey, and Chansey is going to be able to go ahead. And we're going to see an Encore now, which basically means the Chansey gets up to full and gets the double back out. As we're going to see a knock, predicting the Toxic Specs are going to come back in on that, which is really good. We're going to see another knock here. As they actually go for the another Surf here, which can 2 AKO, as we're going to see now, Toxic Specs is fucked to full. We're going to see another Volt Switch here. And we're probably going to either see a Gunk Shot here, a Surf, or a Recover Turn. We're going to see another Gunk, which again, don't know if I agree with that play. And we're going to see the Chansey come in here. We're going to see an SE. We're going to probably see a Thunder Wave on the Chansey. No, we do not, actually. What set is this Chansey? Why are you not Thunder Waving? As we see an SD here, and that's going to most likely. It's not going to knock out the Chansey, but the Chansey gets really good value here. And now we're going to see a Night Slash just trying to be able to predict something here. As we see the Como come in now, and Como just kind of gets a free setup turn here. And uh, it's actually going to go for the flamethrower, which is going to knock out the Tinkaton. So the Tinkaton was a sack there. In comes the Kilowatch. We're going to see a potentially Volt Switch here. No, we do see the Hurricane. And it looks like this is a Roost Endeavor Volt Switch Hurricane, which does mean that this Toxic can be able to beat this thing 1v1. And unfortunately, get a crit. Don't know if the crit's going to matter too much. Oh, the Gunshot. Now that crit kind of matters. As we're going to see a Surf that that did no damage. Earth Power. They're going to sack off the Toxic Packs. And in comes the Anamorous. It's going to get a free Moon Blast damage here. As we're going to see the Moonblast there. In comes the Kilowatcher, which is that full. It's going to Volt Switch, get rid of the Enamorous, and it's looking pretty good for Flapple right now. As in comes the Kamo'o, which I'm very interested to see. We're going to see the player up. It's going to die, and this is looking like it's Flapple's game right here. As the Spectre is going to come in here, we're going to see a Dark Pulse, which I definitely think is a smart play because it's the only way they got a shot to win this game. And we're going to see the Trick Room, which means that this is going to be game. We're going to see a Terra Ghost. And Flapple is going to pick up a very dominant win right here. Uh, definitely Flapple took advantage of all the opportunities that they were given in that matchup. I definitely think Potatoes made some mistakes in just going for gunk shots when the tank was still there. Um, you should never, like, there's two steel types. I never click gunk in that situation. And gunk really doesn't help you much because now Rillaboom is gone. Surf was free, surf was free, surf was free, surf was free, surf was free. I definitely think going for those gunk turns really cost you the game here. Uh, Mimikyu with the Trick Room, though, that was actually a really cool tech for this matchup. Especially since it would have made sure that guaranteed that the Blood Moon or Selena was going to win. So, in other words, Flapple played perfectly well. So, we're going to see Fiendish Blish versus Flapple in the finals for the Enamorous Division. So, get hyped for that. Flapple is bringing the tech. Bliss brings the power. It's time to see these two teams head off. We can't wait to see what this happens next week. And congratulations, Potatoes, for also making the semifinals very well deserved. All right, now we get to the best division, a.k.a. the Th the Tornadus division. Almost messed that up there. 
we get to see the Tornadus division, obviously, because it's best if. So we see Alphon, who is still trying to make his hunt going forward versus Scran. Uh, from Alphon, we see the Terra on the Espeon. Um, I believe he has Fire and Fairy, and I think going into this matchup, he's going to probably honestly go with the Fire type, I think, honestly. As crazy as that sounds. Fairy does also make sense. I think Fairy just because it at least prevents the Okie Doki if it's Scarf. Unless it's Scarf. And if it's Scarf, then Scarf is 100% Fairy. If it's not Scarf, then I think Fire is better in terms of the Fire typing. But we see the Hysidian Samurai, the Toxicity, Espathra, the Iron Shreds, and the Blissey versus Scrans, Komala, Forges, Garchomp, Okie Doki, Rabambi, and the Mana Feast. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. So let's go into this game. We're going to see the Okie Doki. We're going to see a high horsepower. And this thing is about to just drop as this is a Psy Shock. And the Scarf Okie Doki is gone, which now that means that this, that this team's going to look really good here. Now, like, because you look at look, Okie Doki, destroys, destroys, depending on investments and stuff can get destroyed. Could have probably destroyed with a knockoff, honestly. Destroys, so, like, this team really lost Okie Doki, and they just lost it turn one just like that. So, uh, this is going to be very interesting to see how they play this Espeon. They're going to Calm Mine, as we're going to see a Moonblast here. This thing dies the next turn. It's going to probably go for the Psy Shock here, get as much damage as it can. And they're actually going to go for the KO. I don't know if I... Okay, really, game? I don't know if I agree with that. I think if you had any Wish Protect... If you had Wish Protect, I would have gone for that. Also, I think Baton Passing, that also, if you had it was a fair play, honestly. Because now you're allowing this thing to kind of come in and this click. Uh, we're going to see a Moonblast. And that actually still does a lot of damage. Pass plus one. And uh, this... This might just be game. I I, I kid you not. I, I actually think this might... Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This might not be... Oh my god, that did a lot. This might not... Oh, no! Oh, that's game. That's game. Oh, my God. That is... Okay, okay. Oh, wait, actually, never mind. Well, that's game. That is game. Espathro! Oh, my goodness. And this is what happens when a star fight gets going, guys. I also hate when my computer does this. I plan on hopefully buying a new one soon because it's literally being a pain in the butt right now. But, uh, wow. I, that was insane. That is insane. I definitely think Scran choked that game by not clicking Bug Buzz. I I really think they ch I mean I guess realistically speaking they didn't really choke unless they got a crit. But they were only plus two defense, plus two spadef, so I don't know if Bug Buzz I mean I I don't know. I, I personally think the Bug Buzz play would have been smarter. But you didn't have any forms of priority once that like got going, so I don't know. I guess you would have tried to play for the crit. But you had already lost this. I think spamming knockoff was the play. Because it would have kept this low. And I don't know. I think just going for the gunk cost you there. I really don't think you should have clicked gunk in that opinion. I think clicking knockoff still works. Because knockoff should do at least around 20 25% scale even without an item. Because you did like 60 to 70%. So I think knocking was still the play there in my opinion. Because it would have played for damage rolls if he kept roosting. And he was almost out of... He was going to... Probably would be close to out of roosters depending on the damage rolls. So I don't know. I personally think I would have spammed knockoff instead of trying to go for the gunk there. But Alphon able to position himself perfectly. And this is why you gotta draft the dark type, ladies and gentlemen. And a really good dark type, especially the psychics like you get for coverage. But as you can see, um he went really just for the psychic coverage. He did not care about having a dark type on his opponent's team unless his opponent didn't have a dark type at all. And took full advantage of it. So, uh, shouts to Alphon, though, man. He makes the finals after narrowly clinching a seven-seed slot. So, he has definitely moved, deserved his finals appearance. So, shout-outs to Alphon. He's going to be facing the winner of Chef versus Bash in the finals for the 
more noticed divisions. But massive shout-outs to Scran. Definitely played very well. He really, really fought back and earned that win in the playoffs last week. So uh, definitely well-deserved. And trust me, as someone that's been swept by Al Spothor before, actually twice, actually, with one being Terra, one not being Terra, this sucks, especially when Hax gets involved. But Hax was not involved in this one, obviously. But it just sucks to get swept by a bird like this, which is kind of lame. But it is what it is. But we're going to move on to the next game, which is, like I said before, Chef versus Bash. Very, very good game, I'm going to guess right here. As we see from Chef's side, we see the Zapdos. The uh, Great Toss, Spectre, Tauros, Milotic, and Hisui, not Hisui, Valerian, Weezing, as we see from Bash, the Corviknight, the Enamorous, Ursuluna, Blood Moon, Como O, Mew, and the Toxapex. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this matchup here. As we're going to see the light screen from the Zapdos. I love the animation for Blood Moon. That tickled. As we're going to see a Skull, hopefully get the burn. No burn. As we see the Weezing Gallery coming in here. We see the Toxic Spikes. Very interesting play there from the Toxic Spikes perspective. Um, I personally think... Okay, can my computer stop doing this? I do think it's a little weird to bring Neutralizing Gas into this matchup. I don't know if I like that into this match. I guess it's kind of good for Blood Moon. I, and maybe stopping Regenerator on the, the, the What's It. But I... I don't know if I agree with that because with having, I guess you wanted to have a grounded poison, but then again, I feel like you should have maybe gone with Misty Surge. I guess like I, I'm a little confused by neutralizing gas a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, but the Blood Moon's gonna come in here as we're gonna see the toxic. We're gonna see a Blood Moon here and just oh my god, Citrus Berry on the Milota. Because now we're gonna see the toxic come in here again. Again, we're in that same situation. We're going to get another Toxic Spike up, which is very surprising with the Weezing can easily come in here. We see our Hurricane. God, that does so much damage. That also did pretty good damage behind Reflect right there. I mean, Light Screen. We're just going to see another Hurricane. As we see the Confusion, we do see a Moonlight here. And then comes the Weezing. He's going to absorb those Toxic Spikes. As Corviknight comes in here, Corviknight is going to get taunted here as we are going to see that it went for a taunt of its own. So we're going to see a U-turn as they try to go for the Toxic on a double out here. We're going to see a Utility here. And we're going to see a Nasty Plot Mew. Oh, dear God. As we're going to see a Taunt. And it shuts down the Haze on this Milotic. As we're going to see a Miracle for the Milotic. Wow. And it's going to force the Mew to go for the KO instead of for the Recovery. As now we're going to see a Sub on this uh, Spectre, which is going to be a little interesting. We're going to see Sub Nasty. Very interesting. I'm also going to very interested to see that play. We're seeing another nasty plot. We see the roar from Bash. Very good tech from Bash. Pulling out the hidden tech on Ursaluna Blood Moon there. Very good play right there. Very good play. As we're going to see now the Blood Moon animation here. We're going to see a free Roost as the light stream comes up here. As they're going for the Earth Power predicting the Roost. Really good play right there. As we're going to see our Hurricanes. They're going to get confused again. Hit the roar off, and in comes the Spectre, which is a little bit bad. And we see a crit, Psychic, and hit a Confusion. Oh, that's such a rough turn. As we're going to see another Psychic here. As in comes the Zapdos on a light screen here. We're going to see the Roost here from the Zapdos, and we're going to see a U-turn here. And if all under the static, oh my god, this is just not this poor man's one. As we're going to see another Hurricane, get another Confusion, and thankfully get the Moonlight off. Which is really big there, as we're now going to see the light screen from the Zapdos. So we're going to see a moonlight, which gets this bear up to full recovery. But this bear is really running out of recoveries. This bear is down to just four moonlights. As we see another taunt, and we're going to see a thunderbolt, which is not going to do much. And we see the paralyzation. We're going to see another thunderbolt into the U turn. In comes this Mew, which is probably going to click Masty Plot. Now we're going to see a straight up psychic here. Which is going to be a cup to two a KO. And Zapdos is going to go down into the Spectre here. Going into the Blood Moon. We see a nasty plot here. As we're going to see a Psychic. Which is going to be enough to two a KO. We're going to see a Blood Moon. But let's just obliterate this thing. As it's Shilon Berry. Wow. What a play from Chef in the prep. Wow. That, that deserves a hand clap right there. That deserves a hand clap right there. Wow. Phenomenal prep from Chef. And I think Chef might. Depending if there's no Scarfer. Chef just might win this matchup. We're going to see a Psychic. Psychic at 2AKOS here. This thing's not plus 3. In comes the Enamorous. 
Now, I do think, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, wait, why did he do that? That's such a throw. That's definitely not a throw because he has to fear this thing being scarfed. If this thing is scarfed, it KOs this thing. And he cannot allow free damage off or kill on a Spectre. When Spectre can theoretically just beat this, it beats this. Depending on the set, can it probably just beat this? Theoretically, it showed if it gets a nasty plot, it can beat this. So it's definitely worth saving in the back here. So we're going to see a Moonblast here. That's 100% specs. That's 100% specs. No, it's not specs. We see a life orb shot. Knock it out. In comes the Tauros here. So we're going to see a Terra normal body slam. And that's going to kill the Mew, which is really good here. In comes the Toxic. So we're going to see a body slam. Oh, dear God. That is physically defensive as all heck for that thing. We're going to see a body slam, which is not going to paralyze us. We're going to see recover stall here, though. As actually see the Spectre come in. We're going to see a nasty plot here. As we see the Haze. Very smart prep there. As we see another nasty plot. And another Haze. Definitely smart from Bash here. Just to guarantee make sure that this thing does not stay at plus two. As we're going to see a Psychic. Not get the guarantee. As we're going to see another Haze here. Now it comes out. He's going to let this thing go down. And comes the... Um, actually, this could be bad. We're going to see the Psychic here. Thankfully, because of it's only plus one, the Ursula is going to take it out. And we see that this is going to go on. We're going to see now the Bear come in. We're going to see a Body Slam. Toros picks up another KO, but I think Toros should theoretically clean this game. As we're going to see the clinging scales. I don't know if I agree with clinging scales there, but I think that this... Ooh. Wait a minute here. Oh, wait a minute. I think Chef just pulled out the victory. I think Chef just pulled out the victory. Chef just pulled out the victory! Wow! Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Chef really played it a little risky there. I'm not going to lie that last turn, going for the bulk up there. But the fact that I saw speed, that was where the game was over. But I think he had to risk the bulk up there, though, because he probably didn't outright kill this thing unless he got the bulk up. So I think the fact that he knew he kind of had to risk that bulk up, knowing he could have gotten critted or put in range to die to poison from the clanging scales, um, he was willing to take that risk. And the risk pays off for Chef, man. Chef... Pulls out the narrowest of 1-0s. So we will see Chef versus Alphon in the finals. And it's going to be looking like a really good match. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that one. So GG's to both of them. Massive shout-outs to Bash. He really came in the clutch there, getting the day seed very narrowly. But he definitely earned his spot there. And shout-outs to Chef, who, again, keeps on pers pers well, persevering. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> And uh, just to keep going trucking, man. But uh, massive GG's to both. Uh, but congratulations again to Chef. And we're going to get to our final game, which I'm going to label Game of the Week because it deserves to be labeled as Game of the Week. I'm actually going to try to refresh the page here so we can actually see an actually good sprites here because I don't know why. It was just blanking on that because like I had to restart my computer earlier on, guys, because of this. Because I think the files were just too much. I think I did them all at once and they blockaded everything. So it's whatever. But I fixed it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this matchup. Again, Pika versus Lunar was not a replay that was... Okay, we'll just leave it as this. I don't care. Actually, just in case of future games, I'm not going to do that. But we have got now SJ versus Kyles, and this is going to be a really good match. I can just feel it. We have from Kyles there, they have the um, uh, Cyclozar, the Primate, which I'm guessing is a Terramon, if I remember correctly. Palafin, Goldango, which came in clutch for Kyle's last week. The Politoed and the Deancey versus SJ's team of Baxcalibur, Sloking, Driftblim, Koopa Unbound, Landorus Therian, and the Rabombi. Uh, definitely think Webs could be really good in this matchup. But I don't think realistically you really need them. So if I'm seeing this Rabombi, I think it's offensive Rabombi. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right. But we're going to see the Rabombi into the Palafin lead. We do see Webs. Very surprised to see Webs when there is a Defiant Primate on the team. Very, very interesting, especially when there's also a clear body. This good as gold, which I believe does not get affected by this. So it's only going to realistically affect Cycles are if it's not boots and if it's um, not boots on the Palafin. Also, very surprised that the Palafin did not go for the flip turn there. I mean, I kind of understand why you wouldn't want to risk a potentially Energy Ball, Moon Blast. Or a damaging move, but I think you should have always just gone for flip turn there, just to take the chance. Especially if you were also scarf. If you were scarf, I would have gone for that. But if you weren't scarf, 
I mean, you gotta expect that this is potentially Sash lead, and just going off flip turn to potentially break Sash would have been way more important. But, uh, who knows? So we're gonna see this thing come in here, which I believe does not get We're gonna see a Shadow Ball, which, that is AV as all hell. That is AV. Holy crap. We're gonna see a knockout, which actually does pretty good damage into the leftovers. We see the Energy Ball, which is gonna be able to pick up the two kills. We can see a Stealth Rock here, and they're gonna stack off the Deancey. Uh, but rocks are pretty much here to stay, which means that there's no boots. Uh, things are getting chipped. We are going to see the Cycles are, which is actually not boots. And we see a Willowus, which is going to get burned. And so we see a knockoff into the Terra Fairy, which I also didn't pick up. We see the Rocky Helmet. So now if this thing is unburdened, it is guaranteed faster. And we see the Defog. Why? Why Defog? Like, wait, what? Wait. Why would you defog? You had webs, which pretty much shut down everything. I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised. I'm also very surprised you would change your ghost typing because now that allowed spin from. I, I'm so confused. But now he comes to gold angles. We see a strength staff here with good as gold. Oh my god! I actually did not. I did not know that Strength Sap could not be affected by Good as Gold. I'm not going to lie to you. But I guess this is a stat lowering thing. It shouldn't be. But still, that's so. Oh my god, that's broken. We see a Make It Rain, though, which is looking like this is better for Dev. As we see a Chiller Reception, it's going to be into the backs. And no, it's going to be into the B movie. As we're going to see a Moon Blast knock out the Cyclozar. And we're going to see the Gold Angler. We're going to see a U turn now into this uh, Hoop Unbound, which is going to take eat up this Make It Rain here. Which that did not that is definitely like almost max pedef AV. It has to be. We're gonna see a knockoff on the hoop, and this will be Chesto Barry, so that means that it's resto chesto. We see the liquidation, which is not gonna do much. And we see a rocky helmet. But we see the chili reception into the uh hoop on We see a knockoff into liquidation here, and I think they're pretty much just sacking it off the uh, they basically just did sack it off. We can put the prime, which is gonna be Terra Fairy. Into the Terra Blast, which actually does no damage. We're going to see a Scald. If it's burned, it's probably... Yeah, I'm going to say if it's Scald burn, it's probably about GG. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely looking bad. We're going to see a Rest into this, which gives it the Fire Boost, which is plus one. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! SJ! Wow! Wow! That is a hype! That's fire! That's fire! Yo, SJ! You 100% get a hand clap for that. You 100% get a hand clap for that. Wow! That was phenomenal! That was phenomenal! Wow! a copy defiant boost that is huge that is huge i mean you're still gonna die to this oh you rage fisted oh well you at least get one kill dang i wanted the palafin i wanted you to kill it with... wow the palafin body slam that was almost bro and now we're gonna see a dragon dance and that's pretty much wait what um wait what what why do we switch you're you max out at 300. This is 290. Wait, what? Even if it's scarfed, it doesn't. I. I. What? I, I'm so confused. Why'd you do that? Okay, we see a hyperspace fury, but. End of the nasty plot. I, I'm a little concerned or confused by that, but. We're gonna see the body slam. Income slow king, which pretty much just walls this. Ow! Needs paras, no paras, into chili. Okay, uh, a little bit of a drawn out match here. We're gonna see a body slam into the para. We're gonna see a D dance, and okay. And we see ice body, cool tech. We see a glaive rush, and knocks out V palafin. And SJ is going to move on to the finals, taking on Yika Trod here. SJ brought in some fire this week. I, I definitely think they maybe dragged out the matchup a little bit there. Like, I don't know why you don't just Earthquake unless you know it wasn't going to kill the Godango. 
But I guess I can kind of see why you didn't want to risk this thing. Because it could have been able to help beat this. I don't know. But, but congratulations to SA. They definitely deserved it. They're definitely my pick for Thunderous to win this division. And uh, they have a shot to win it all now. They will take on Picatrod in the finals. So let's see if I can use my good memory here. We're going to see uh, Cam versus Crab in the finals for the Lana division. We're going to see... Fiendish Bliss and Flapple in the Enamorous Division. For the Tornadus Division, we are going to see Chef versus Alphon. And in your Thunderous Division, we are going to see Picatrod and SJ in the finals. And uh, very high for this. Uh, I have to really pick a good Mon to get Thumbnail. I don't know who's going to get it. It's going to be very, very tough. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And with that being said, uh, thank you all so much for watching. We will see you guys in this video on Monday. I'm breaking the fourth wall. I'm recording this on Sunday. We'll see you on Monday. So get hype. Very, very, very happy about these games. These are really good games. I definitely think a lot of people made some very bad misplays. But you know what? We're all going to make mistakes. We're all human. And it's going to happen to the best of us. As someone that definitely was making a lot of mistakes recently in some of these games, as you guys could have seen, you know, it's going to happen to you. And uh, all you do is just learn from them and just bounce back for the next game or next season you do. But yeah, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the final games of the JJDL uh, JJDL main season for the four division. Till next time, guys. I'll see you guys later.